there, all you pixies and peeps. Thanks for tuning in to my channel, The Purple Pixie. And welcome, or welcome back, to the Fairy Garden, otherwise known as my craft room. If you're new here, why don't you go ahead and join the Pixie Party by hitting the subscribe button below. Today's video is part of my Save Our Earth collab. And our co-host this month is the lovely Danielita AF. The premise of this collab is that you have to craft with trash. That's right, if it was going in the garbage or going to the landfill, if you made something out of it, then you can upload a video to my playlist. Now, as I said, my lovely co-host this month is Danielita AF, the crafty mixologist. And if you haven't seen her channel, you're missing out. She is so creative and talented and a true artist. I'm going to leave her link below in the description box as well as the link to the entire playlist for this collab. So now let's jump into it and get to our first DIY, the full reverse canvas frame. Now, as I said, this entire video is dedicated to crafting with trash. And I'm going to be making some craft supplies. Because as you may know, I'm on a very tight budget and I don't have transportation to get to the store all the time. So I can't just run to Dollar Tree whenever I need a plaque or some florals or stuff like that. I have to make my own. So I'm going to show you how to make a kind of reverse canvas out of an empty cardboard box. Now while I was sitting here running my mouth, you saw me cut up this mashed potatoes box. And I cut all the sides off because that's what we're going to be folding to make the canvas look reversed. Now since the side panels and the bottom panels of the box are already sized to fit the box, we're going to use those to make it look like a reverse canvas. I measured it out and found the middle and the sides and drew some lines. And now I'm just going over it lightly with my razor to make some score lines. I don't want to cut all the way through, I just want to be able to fold the cardboard. And I'm going to do this to both of the side panels and the bottom panels of the box. As you see here, the frame ended up being about a half an inch wide. And it fits perfectly on our cardboard box panel. And by the way, we're going to take both panels of the box and glue those together to make a, well, make the canvas. But here you see me scoring some lines on the bottom panel of the box. Again, you don't want to go all the way through the cardboard with the razor blade. You could even use just an ink pen and press down real hard if you like. Now this notch that I'm cutting is going to help our faux frame overlap the other side. In hindsight, I should have mitered the edges, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, because it left a lot of seams that I had to cover up. And here you see me taking some Elmer's School Glue and just filling in the cracks. But that turned out to be an unnecessary step as well, because we are going to go over this with some spackle. Now, as I said, I should have mitered the edges, but I didn't. So I'm taking some pieces of cardboard and using my ruler to get a fold. I'm going to place that over the holes and glue it down. Now while that's drying, I'm going to take a lighter weight cardboard box and show you how to miter the edges like I should have done. Now yes, that is a cigarette carton box and I can feel you judging me already. But just remember, there's only one true judge and that's God. And he told me I'm doing all right in his book. Have you talked to him lately? If you do, tell him I said hello. Now here's another idea. Instead of painting the frame, you can put the cardboard onto a piece of paper with a glue stick and cut it out. That'll save a little hassle. Now, I have a really old silhouette cameo, but I'm going to show you how you can print out your own pictures or decorative paper. Now, I went into my library and went to my patterns and chose this white shiplap 
wood. I duplicated it on my screen and moved it next to it. Now I'm going to group it together and duplicate it again so that it makes a bigger piece. And then I group that together as well. And then I will shrink it down to the size that we need to print it onto our copy paper. I just type in the dimensions at the top of the page and it automatically shrinks it down. Now I'm going to hit print and it's going to print it out and tell me that I'm low on ink like I don't already know that but here it is and you can use any picture or paper that you want to print out now I lost the footage of me painting the frame and mod podging the paper onto the board but here's how it looks without embellishments now I'd like to tell you thank you for stopping by today and also direct you to the link down below where you could buy me a coffee. Things like that really help my channel to grow and actually help me to buy more craft supplies so that I can bring these videos to you. So any help would be greatly appreciated. Now let's move on to project number two, faux galvanizing. Now I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I've seen a bunch of people haul these galvanized words and phrases from the Dollar Tree but I can't get to the Dollar Tree and I don't have the budget to go so I'm just gonna have to make my own now I've used soda boxes before to do this but for some reason this time it was a fail here I'm showing you the cut settings that I used on my silhouette I even put my deep cut blade in set it to the highest force and the lowest speed and made it pass five times but for some reason these words just were not cutting out not on this coke box so i ended up using you guessed it a cigarette carton instead i figured while i had my paints out and i was going to show you this technique i might as well make some other shapes that i've been wanting to work with so i'm drawing out a little house you know, you've seen the little houses that they get from the Dollar Tree. The little wooden cutouts. Well, like I said, I can't get to the Dollar Tree, so I'm going to make my own. But since I can't math when it comes to angles like this, it took me a few tries to get it right. I figured my little house needed some windows and maybe a door, so I cut out some little squares and another piece that was kind of oval and rounded at the top for the door. And once again I just used some regular Elmer's school glue to glue them down. I'm using my ruler here to make sure I get my windows straight because if y'all know me I can't get anything straight without a ruler. And now I'm making some little gift tags that we're going to galvanize. Those will be useful in the upcoming holidays. Okay, so we finally have our word cut out by our silhouette. And we cut out five of them. Now we're just going to use some regular school glue and layer them. Try to get them as even as you can. And it's a little tedious, but I even use tweezers to make them fit. Also, if you can do this on a silicone mat, that would be best because the glue does leak out a little bit and it's easier to remove it from the silicone mat. The one I have here was sent to me by a sweet subscriber, Miss Rochelle Craig. She sent me all kind of stuff and I'm so thankful. I'll be using a lot of the things she sent me throughout this video and future videos. And as I said before, if you would like to help and send me some magic mail, you'll find my address and the links to my buy me a coffee and my Amazon crafting supply wish list in the description box below. So once our letters are dry, I'm going to go over them with some gray paint. Several different shades of gray paint that is. And I'll have the colors listed in the description box below. To make cardboard look galvanized takes layers, lots of layers. You start with your darkest gray first, 
and then work your way to your lightest. And we're even going to incorporate some silver metallic paint, some white, and black. And once everything has a good coat, take your sponge and go in with your second color. That one wasn't working for me, so I decided to go with my chalk paint instead. You just want to dab it on like in a stippling motion. You could even use a stencil brush if you like. And now that we have several layers of grays and black, we're going to go in and add some white using these little chippy brushes, courtesy again of Miss Rochelle. I'm going to go in and lightly brush some white over the gray, blending it as I go. I really love these little chippy brushes. I wish I knew where she got them because they are perfect for dry brushing and distressing. Thanks again, Miss Rochelle. And now for another coat of some grays and blacks. You just keep blending and layering until it looks galvanized. And you may think you don't need this certain color, but you really do, even if you're going to cover it up. Because it's the undertones of the paint that are going to show through that's going to make it look like metal. So keep layering, stippling, and blending as you go. I got a little heavy handed with the white on the house, as you can see, but it just wasn't turning out right. I didn't like it. So I just kept layering, hoping that it would turn out looking good. But in the end, I think it was a fail. Or, shall I say, a mishap. But I pushed forward and I still wanted to put it on my faux reverse canvas. So I cut some strips from that cardboard box and folded it. Because I want to put it behind the house so that it stands out from the paper backing. I just folded them accordion style and used my hot glue to hold them in place. And then I glued them to the back of my house and then put some glue on them and put them onto my frame. However, I didn't like it so I took them off and I couldn't get those little pieces off of the frame. So I decided I'm going to make a bow in the shape of a cross to cover it up. I'm taking this burlap ribbon that I got a while back and a big pack from Amazon. It came with an assortment of burlap ribbons and even some flowers. So I measured out how big I needed the bottom layer of my bow to be, going vertically and horizontally. I glued those together in the middle to make the center of my bow. And now I'm going to take this other ribbon and measure it out to be about the same size. And y'all, look how pretty this ribbon is. When I come across things like this in my stash, I usually don't want to use it because, well, <laughs> it's just too pretty to use. Do you ever feel that way? Do you have stuff in your stash that you don't want to use because you don't want to waste it on a certain project? Let me know in the comments down below if you're like me. Now, as you see here, I'm not the greatest bow maker. I can design really pretty bows and put them all together, but when it comes time to twisting them in the middle, for some reason I just cannot get it right. I use pipe cleaners, I use twine, ah, uh, I just can't get it tight enough. But I was able to make it work, so I got the two bows and I twisted them together with the pipe cleaners on them. Once they're put together, come out pretty thick, so I decided not to fluff out the bow because it already stands off from the canvas quite a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and use those pieces that I couldn't pry off to glue my bow to the faux reverse canvas. And now I'm going to hide the chenille stem in the middle with one of the flowers that came in that assortment. By the way, you like my purple glue gun? <laughs> it was gray and I painted it with a paint marker. Her name is Lavender, and she's pretty fussy about which glue sticks she prefers, and I'm almost out of the ones that she uses. Now, I decided to throw this project in here because I also painted it to look a little galvanized. I'm making this for my daughter to hang on her door of her new home. 
Although the initial of her last name is M, she chose to go with B for her boyfriend's last name. This was a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, and I painted the bottom half black, and the top I went with the galvanized technique. What do you think? Does it look alright? I have to say, I'm pretty proud of it. I can't wait for her to see it. And here's all the other pieces that I painted. The house is still on the frame before I took it off and put the boat. So now it's time to move into project number three, a faux wood disc. Another thing I see on a lot of people's Dollar Tree hauls are the little wooden discs that they can paint and embellish. But, like I said, I can't get to the Dollar Tree and even if I could, I sure can't afford it. I can walk in there and spend the hundred dollars quick, but that don't mean I have a hundred dollars in my account. But what I do have in my stash is a bunch of old CDs. So I'm going to glue a bunch of them together, use a little clip, some tape to hold it still while it dries, and then we're going to paint it to look like wood. But first we need to do something about those little edges that are sticking up. So I'm using some heavy duty 60 grit sandpaper to try and sand it down. It worked for a little bit and it's going to help the paint stick, but I decided to go in with some lightweight spackle that I did get from Dollar Tree a while back smooth it out, put it in the center, sanded it down when it dried, and now I'm going to paint this just like we did the galvanized pieces. Instead of using grays, blacks, and whites, I'm using browns. Lots of different shades, lots of different layers. And the colors I use will be listed in the description box below. Again, the trick to this is lots of layers for the undertones of the colors. Try to blend a little as you go, but go ahead and just stipple on the paint. And if you would like it to look like slats of wood, you can use a pencil and draw lines and then smudge them with your fingers to make it look like slats of wood. But that's not the look we're going for today. Now, I designed this little heifer in my silhouette studio and I made it into a free printable that is linked in the description box so you can go over there and grab it yourself. I printed her out and very carefully cut out all the little edges on the sunflower and the cud that she was chewing on. And then I used my Mod Podge to decoupage her onto the faux wood disc. Now I also designed some letters in my silhouette studio to go on this little plaque. I cut it out in vinyl, but these little letters had me struggling. So I didn't put that footage in here because I didn't want you to have to see me go through that. And then I decided that I'm going to make this little plaque reversible. So instead of hanging a hanger on the back of it, I'm going to take this rope that my daughter got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around the CD. That'll help hide the edges too. I got a little heavy with the rope and the glue at the bottom where they meet, so I ended up making a really small bow and just tacking it right on top. Oh, gotta trim those fuzzies off too. So here I'm taking a craft stick and I'm wrapping some jute twine around it to make a small bow. Now if you've been watching me a while, you know I have neuropathy in my hands and making small things like this just isn't easy for me. But look, I was able to pull it off, and it actually looks pretty cute. Now, here's something that I made for my nephew out of Coke boxes. I designed the cross in Silhouette Studio, and cut it out of the Coke boxes, layered them and glued them together just like we did the word blessed. And then I painted it to make it look like leather. It has a few edges that don't meet up, but I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. What do you think? Now, before we go any further, I want to give another huge thank you and shout out to my co-host this month, Danielita AF. She's been crazy busy with, well, life in general, and yet she still found time to upload a video to our playlist, and I'm so grateful. And I also want to say thank you to all of the other lovely ladies that are participating. 
They're really talented and creative. So make sure you check out the playlist and see what they came up with. It's gonna be great. Make sure you go check out their channels too and subscribe because that really helps our channels to grow. Even just hitting the like button or making a small comment on our videos tells YouTube that you like the content and that makes YouTube notice us more. And now it's time for a fur baby break. I haven't done one in a while, but I regret to say that this is a sad one. My baby Felix is eight years old and he's been missing for two weeks now. I've made posts on Facebook on our neighborhood page and I've even contacted our local animal shelter, but no luck. I miss him so much and so does my other fur baby, Sydney. It's the not knowing what happened to him that really hurts. He loved to roam the neighborhood, so I'm hoping somebody just took him inside and won't let him out, but I do fear that something bad happened. I just hope and pray that wherever he is, and whatever happened, he didn't suffer. So fearing the worst, I must say, I hope he rests in peace. But, life goes on, and so does this video. So let's get into project number four, the faux cutting board. I found this template online, it was free, and I printed it out. So now I've got to cut it out so that I can trace it onto my cardboard. But you didn't tune in to sit here and watch me cut paper, so I'm going to speed it up just like I do everything else. By the way, I'd like to take a poll. Do you think my videos are too fast? If so, let me know in the comments down below. I really need some feedback from y'all. I'm old and I craft slow, so whenever I go to edit, I have to speed the video up or we'd be here all day. But if it goes too fast for y'all, then I can work on slowing it down a bit. Okay, so now I've got two pieces traced onto a old pizza box. You know, the part of the box that isn't all greasy. Y'all already know I save everything, and that's good cardboard, it's pretty sturdy. So I just cut out two pieces, and I'm going to glue them together, and this time I'm going to hold them together with some paper clips. Why? Because I don't have any clamps to hold them together with. So if you use paper clips too, make sure that you get them on there, but don't let them scratch the cardboard or make indents. Now, you could definitely do more layers, but I'm just doing two because this is going to be a decorative little cutting board for my daughter's kitchen. And even though it's thinner than a real cutting board, I'm still going to fill around the edges with some spackle. And once that's dry, I will give it a light sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. And that's also going to help the paint adhere to the box. Now, I've been wanting to make a cutting board for myself for quite a while. And it's a shame that I'm sitting here showing you how to make one that I'm going to be giving away and I'll still end up with no cutting board for myself. But that's okay. I'll get around to making myself one eventually. So now I'm going over it with some white chalk paint. And because I chose to have the printed side facing out, this took me four good coats of this chalk paint front and back. So I'm pretty glad that my daughter asked for a white cutting board rather than a faux wood looking cutting board because that would have taken me forever. Now I'm going to be putting a decal of vinyl on this cutting board so I'm going to put down a layer of Mod Podge first so that the transfer tape doesn't peel up my paint. Here's another hack for you. Instead of using a weeding tool, I make my own pin pens. You just take a sewing needle and take the lead out of the mechanical pencil. Once you have the sewing needle in there, just use it like you would a regular mechanical pencil. And it weaves great. A real pen pen sells for about 15 to 20 bucks online. But this one didn't even cost pennies. And in my opinion, it works even better than the ones you can buy. Now, it kills me to watch other crafters waste their vinyl, so I'm going to show you what I do. I take my paper cutter, and I trim as close as I can to the decal. 
I save every little scrap of vinyl because you just never know when you might have to cut out just one letter that didn't read right or something like that. Another hack I have for you is about the transfer tape. I keep mine in one of these sleeve thingies that you put paper in and then put it in a three ring binder. On one side I have new pieces of transfer tape, which I use the contact brand from the Dollar Tree or Walmart, and on the other side I keep the used pieces, because you can reuse them. Like this one. This is a piece I've already used. I'm wanting to use this piece because it's not as tacky as a new piece. So with it not being as tacky, I have less risk of it pulling up my paint when I put the decal onto the cutting board. And I'm just going to lightly press it down, just enough where the vinyl sticks to the board. And then I will take the paper back and my old Cricut scraper and press it down hard enough to make sure it sticks for good. Now all the cutting board needs is a bow. So once again I dig into my stash of that burlap ribbon and I'm going to fold the pieces over and stack them. My goodness, how much hot glue does one bow need? And now, try watching me tie some jute rope around all that hot glue. It's times like this when my hands start acting like a hippie. They just don't work. So I decide to go in with some more hot glue to <laughs> glue the jute twine down. It may not help me tie it any tighter, but it'll at least hold the twine down. And then I figured while I had it tied, let's glue it in place. That should help, right? And since my fingers weren't working too good this day, I wasn't able to really fluff the bow out that well. But I'll get around to it eventually. It works for now. Now more hot glue to put it on the cutting board. And actually, that didn't hold. I had to go back in a second time and glue it to the board. But it's on there now and I think she's gonna love it. So that's all my projects for today. Are you ready for the final reveal? Good, because here it is.
So what do you think? Were they magic or mishap? I think the galvanized house was a mishap for sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then ring my bell and click all so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. I would love for you to become a part of the Pixie Party where we have lots of cheap crafts and lots of cheap laughs. And if you're already a member of the Pixie Party, let me take this chance to say thank you so much. You mean the world to me. And without your support, I wouldn't be here. And with that being said, I'll leave you with this. Don't just think outside the box. Think, what can I make with that box? Thank you so much for watching. I wish you have a blessed day. And please remember that all of me loves all of you.